I think we've evolved past the knowledge economy. That's exactly right. It was Peter Drucker who, in 1959, coined that phrase, knowledge economy, and where we then needed fewer factory workers and more workers who would, instead of moving parts down an assembly line, would move bits of information down the paper trail. And that doesn't exist anymore. That, that kind of work is being done by computers today. So what is it that we human beings can do uniquely that computers can't? That's the question. Today, the, the new economy is an innovation economy. It's not a knowledge economy anymore. It's not an industrial economy anymore. It's an economy that demands that we find solutions to a wide range of problems and create entirely new possibilities, new ideas, new medications, new ways of treating water, of creating energy. There are so many challenges today that really confront us as a species. We can't rely on just a few people to solve them. I think the really critical competency today that, that the world wants and most highly values is that person who can be a creative problem solver. And we are born curious, creative, imaginative. That is the human DNA until things happen in school that tend to diminish th those capabilities. So that's the challenge, to reverse that. It's a cultural transformation, and I think it begins with leaders modeling different kinds of behaviors. It begins with the media understanding some obligation to really highlight and promote new kinds of leadership, new kinds of parenting, new kinds of teaching, new kinds of schools. So there's a leadership role here that is very, very critical. Leaders need to frame the new problem, the new challenge, and highlight those who are really working successfully to address it. You cannot solve problems creatively without competencies. And we have to clearly define those and assess those. I begin with the four C's, critical thinking. You know, most folks talk about teaching critical thinking, but you ask them to, to define it and tell you how they assess it, and they can't. Critical thinking means making connections among disparate bits of information across academic disciplines. Critical thinking is a habit of asking questions. What's the evidence for this? Whose point of view are we hearing from? Uh, are there connections here that we should be thinking about? What's the, what are the implications of this? Habits of question asking. Then comes communication. Communication is all about effective speaking and writing, of course, but it's also about listening. It's also about listening to oneself. And then the third C, of course, is collaboration. And finally, uh, all of those contribute to the capability to solve problems creatively. The job of the teacher in the 21st century is first and foremost to be a coach, to coach students to a higher performance standard. Students can acquire knowledge on their own. The world doesn't care how much our students know. What the world cares about is what they can do with what they know. And to learn how to do that better and better demands and requires good coaching. But it's first and foremost a reinvention of our education system. You know, so often we've defined the education problem as one of incremental reform, taking our an existing system and making it just a little bit better, a little bit more efficient, a little bit more effective. That's not the problem. The problem is to reimagine education for the 21st century. Just as we had to reimagine our small little one-room schools in our villages and create the factory model assembly line schools of a century ago during the beginning of an industrial era, so now we have an era of innovation and need new schools to accompany that new era.